Welcome to our Deaf Bible study for tonight. This is a wonderful week for we who are saved. Why? Because I have heard there are over 4,200 different religions. Do you know that the people who believe in the Bible are the only people who have a risen Savior? And that's us. And so we've come to celebrate and to rejoice and to be excited about this week. I, I want to talk tonight about a topic that God always shows up on time. Again, God always shows up on time. I've been thinking a lot this past week about 2,000 years ago. When Jesus was here, last week on Sunday, Jesus would have entered into uh, Jerusalem on the donkey in what we call the triumphal entry. And by the middle of the week, Jesus was being crucified. Uh, I'm sure the disciples' emotions went from very high to below low. Uh, they were so depressed, I'm sure. Tonight, I want you to consider not one of the disciples, but another person who was involved a very, 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 very much in this story. I hope it'll be a blessing to you. But let's pray, and then we'll get started. Our Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much. Uh, we cannot believe that you sent your only Son to come here to live among sinners and to die for sinners. Thank you so much. We are so grateful that you gave us a, a Savior who is God. Man, yes. God, yes. Both in one person. We thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his death, his burial, and also for his resurrection. And tonight, we pray you would help us guide our hearts into the truths of the Word of God tonight and help us to see clearly how it applies to us and, and impacts our lives. We ask that you would help tonight and, and help us be faithful to you like you have been faithful to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to begin with a story tonight. A few years ago, uh, many years ago now, I was an assistant pastor in Maryland. I was responsible for a couple's Sunday school class and uh, one Sunday after I had finished teaching, uh, one, uh, a couple came up to me and the lady was speaking to me and she said she was weeping. And she said, uh, Jim, could you possibly go and visit my nephew? My nephew, his name is Scott. He's in the hospital and he has a very, very, very serious heart surgery on Tuesday. Could you go to visit with him? And I told her, of course, I'll be happy to do that. And so on Monday... I drove down into the city to a really wonderful hospital there in the area, and I met her nephew. He was, I think, 19, 18 or 19, a handsome guy, uh, look, look healthy to me. And uh, I began to talk with him and just be trying to be friendly with him. He didn't know me. I didn't know him before, but I met him. We were talking, and I said, uh, so tell me about your heart uh, situation. What's, what's happening? And he began to explain to me, and wow, I was amazed. Why? Because I have a niece in the same situation, almost, almost the same uh, situation for their hearts, both almost the same. And so I knew some things, and I began to talk with him, and we immediately we had a good relationship, him and I. And I was getting ready to ask him a question about his eternity, and and I, I paused for a little bit, and his, his phone rang. So he said, oh, excuse me, may I, may I, I'm going to answer the phone. I said, oh, sure, sure, sure. He picked up the phone, began to talk. And I, was, I, I began, while he was talking on the phone, I began to wrestle with the Holy Spirit. That's not too smart. I was thinking to myself, I'm going to wait. I, I will not witness to Scott until after his surgery. He's a college kid. He's probably 
uh, very, very, very doubtful about the gospel. I'm just going to wait, and I'll come back after he has had the surgery. He'll be impressed that I've come to talk with him and that I care about him. I'll just wait. That was me. And then I, I understood, I didn't hear a voice, but I understood the Holy Spirit saying to me one thing, now. Well, I, I tried to explain to God, and God said, now. So I, I waited, and Scott hung up the phone. I asked him, I, I, I hate to ask you this question, but what happens if the surgery, something goes wrong, and you don't live past? Do you know for sure you will go to heaven? And he said, no. I said, can I show you? He said, yes. And I took just a few minutes, and I explained to him the verses that I've explained to many of you many, many times before, but I explained to him, and I said, do you want to receive Christ for yourself? And he said, yes. And that day, there in a hospital bed, he prayed with me to receive Christ. Oh, it was so exciting. He was, he was excited. I was excited. The man with me, we were excited, all three of us. And we, we left, and I promised him, I'll be back to see you after the surgery. I'm going to be praying for you tomorrow. I'll be back to see you. Drove back home. I called his aunt, and I told her what happened. Oh, she was so excited. On Tuesday night, my phone rang. I picked it up, and it was, it was Scott's aunt. And she began, and her voice broke, and and then she, I heard her just weeping and weeping. And I said, Kathy, what's wrong? And she said, Scott had his surgery today. It was successful, but one artery was not sewn shut right, and he died. He bled to death. My heart almost stopped. You know why? because I almost did not share the gospel with him. I knew from his testimony that he, Scott, had prayed sincerely. He prayed for real. He wanted Jesus to come and save him. And I knew that Scott, at that time, he'd already touched heaven. You see, God showed up for Scott less than 24 hours before he would die. God always shows up on time. Well, tonight I want to talk to you about that. If you have a Bible, would you open to John chapter 20? John in the New Testament, John chapter 20. We'll begin there, but before we get there, I want you to have a review with me in the Bible about some times that God showed up, all right? By the way, it's all through our Bible. The first place He showed up, right after Adam and Eve sinned. They were naked. They had taken leaves off the trees and were trying to cover themselves, but it wasn't enough, and God killed an animal for them. Do you know God did the first sacrifice? He killed that animal so he could put clothing on Adam and Eve. God showed up at the right time. I thought about another story in the Bible was Elijah, Elijah, he stood in front of 450 prophets of Baal, and he challenged them to really a contest. Let, let's see who is really God, Baal or my God? And you remember the, the prophets of, of Baal, they made a, a sacrifice, an altar, and they put on their, their bull, and they, they ran around, they ran around, they jumped up and down, they cut themselves, nothing happened. But Elijah prayed, God, prove yourself. And God showed up right on time. And fire, fire did not come up. It came down from heaven and consumed his bull and the stones and the water and all of those things. God showed up. I thought about later, Elijah, uh, right after that, there was a famine. And Elijah himself was hungry and he had traveled and he met a woman who was picking up sticks the, the woman was picking up the sticks to make a fire to feed her son the last of their meal. One, she had enough for one cake, and she was picking up sticks. And Elijah said to her, uh, make me one cake first, and then your son. 
And the woman by faith obeyed. And she made Elijah a cake. Then you know what happened? God showed up. And that woman never had a day without uh, food, food for her son. Because God showed up at the right time and he used Elijah the prophet to help that woman. That woman, sorry, not his wife, that woman. I think about the next person is uh, Daniel. Daniel. We signed Daniel because he was in that lion's den. You know the story. Uh, Daniel was thrown there because he prayed three times a day. He prayed to God. And uh, the uh, presidents in, in the country were, uh, they were really jealous of Daniel. And, and they had Daniel thrown into a den where lions, hungry lions. But God showed up. And those lions, they went to sleep with Daniel. God showed up on time. I think about the next one I put down was uh, that, that woman at the well in the New Testament book of John. She had gone to that well so many times. And remember, she had gone there at noon this time. And she was going there without any hope. Uh, she, had, she had tried marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage and failed and failed and failed. She showed up at that well without any hope for the future, but Jesus showed up exactly at the right time. I think about another one in, in the New Testament. I, I think about Mary and her sister Martha. Their brother Lazarus, Lazarus was sick and Jesus waited four days before he left to go. By the time Jesus arrived there, Lazarus had died, and he'd been dead for four days. And Jesus, you know what happened. He exact, uh, Martha said, if you had come earlier, my brother would not have died. Jesus knew he came at exactly the right time. And he, he called, and Lazarus came out of the grave. It was a wonderful time. I think of one last one, and that's a lady named Mary Magdalene. We're going to sign name for her today, Mary Magdalene, okay? Mary, Mag Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. She, most of her life, lived with demons, demons possessing her. And uh, Jesus met her during her life, and her life was changed. Now fast forward. Here in John chapter 20, I want you to see in verse 1, we're going to meet with Mary Magdalene again, and we're going to see her life story and how God showed up at exactly the right time for her. Really, Jesus showed up. But anyway, in verse 1, it says this, the first day of the week, that is the Three days, three nights after Jesus has been crucified, he's been, he's been in the grave for three days, three nights. On the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher. Now remember, it's important we remember this. We read these words. In the Jewish day, it ends when the sun goes down. So that, that means that Sunday, the first day of the week, Sunday, Mary Magdalene could have shown up at the tomb at 7 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock, whenever it was dark. It says here that she showed up so early it was still dark. And she came. Why did she come so early? I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us too much about why she, she, she showed up there so early. But I'm thinking some people have said she wanted to add some spices to the body of Jesus because they had hurried so much on the Wednesday before. Um, but I think, really, Mary Magdalene, she loved Jesus so much. When he was crucified, remember, she was one of the women who followed them to the grave. She knew where the grave was. And her heart was just so wrenched and so broken. I think she just wanted to be near the place where Jesus was laying. And she showed up there early in the morning. Now, remember, why? Why would Mary Magdalene want to do that? 
Well, remember who she was. Remember where Mary Magdalene came from, what her past had been before Jesus met her. Uh, the Bible tells us that seven demons had lived inside of Mary Magdalene. But when Jesus came, he cast them out. And Mary Magdalene, when she met Jesus Christ, she saw compassion. Uh, she experienced forgiveness like you and I have experienced with Jesus that never she had experienced before. Uh, she, by the way, it's interesting. I did not know this until I was studying for this. Her name appears 12 times in the Bible. That is more than any other woman other than Jesus' family in our Bible. She was a person who, after her salvation, was very close to Jesus Christ. So she went to the grave that morning, the first day of the week. Let's see the rest of the verse. She arrived there early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeing the stone was taken away from the sepulcher. I saw this last week. I, I heard a person say, why did God move the stone? It was not, God did not need to move the stone so Jesus could get out, out of the grave. Jesus could walk through walls. He could have walked through the stone. The person said that God moved the stone so Mary Magdalene could see inside. And Peter and John and the others. Anyway, she arrived there and the stone had been taken away. And, and I want you to see what happens. Verse 2. She says, it says, Then she running comes to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, John, whom Jesus loved. And she saith to them, they have, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we don't know where they have laid him. She was so upset. She ran to the disciples, to Peter and John. You've got to come. Somebody has stolen Jesus' body. She was upset. And Peter and John, then the rest of the verses I'm going to kind of skip for tonight just for time, but you could read how uh, John arrives first and looks into the tomb. Peter arrives second. He goes into the tomb, and then John goes in with him, and they see the, the napkin that was around Jesus' face folded and placed, and the grave clothes were wrapped in another place, and both of those men understand Jesus is risen. But understand, Mary Magdalene did not go in. She stood outside waiting, but she was there with them. I want you to see what it says. Look at, look, I'm going to drop down to verse 11. In verse 11, it says, But Mary stood without the sepulcher, weeping. Her heart is still crushed. She doesn't know what Peter and John already know that Jesus has risen. She is still thinking some person has stolen Jesus' body. And her heart is just crushed. It's not enough that they crucified Jesus. Now they have to steal his body. Why? And she is, her heart is just broken. And she wept. It says, that as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. So now she's not going in, but she's looking in. I have been to Jerusalem before. I have seen the place I think, I believe, is where Jesus was laid. And it's a, there's a small, small, short doorway that if you look in, you can see the place where, where Jesus would have been laid. And Mary Magdalene stooped and she looked in. I want you to see what happens next, verse 12. And seeing two angels. Now, I don't know about you, that would shock me. Mary Magdalene looks in at the place where Jesus' head was before, there sits an angel. Down where his feet would have been, there sits an angel. And it says, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, And they, those two angels, said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, 
and I don't know where they have laid him. She is just so overwhelmed with emotion and grief, and oh, her heart is just broken. I don't know where he is. I want to know where he is. And, and she, by the way, did you notice something interesting? Peter and John did not get a meeting with the angels. Only Mary Magdalene. And, and I have always been amazed that the very first person that Jesus met after his resurrection was not Peter. It was not John. It was not James. It was not any of the other disciples. It was not his own mother. Who did Jesus meet, meet first? Well, here it is. Look at verse 14. It said, And when she had said this, she turned herself back. So she had been looking into the, gra into the grave. Now she turns back, and she saw Jesus standing, and she knew not that it was Jesus. She sees a man, but she does, she's so overwhelmed with her, her grief and her sadness that she doesn't, even, she doesn't even really look. She just, you know, tears are just filling up in her eyes. She can't, she can't see good, and she's just weeping and weeping and weeping. And, and she doesn't know she's there in the presence of Jesus. Look at verse 15. That man, who we know is Jesus, says... Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Now, by the way, Jesus already knows. But he's, he's making contact with her, with Mary Magdalene. Who are you? Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? And she answers him at the end of verse 15. She said, Sir, I think she didn't even look up. She's still weeping. Maybe, maybe she's wiping her eyes. <laughs> maybe she's getting out of her her tissue, and I mean, I don't know. I don't know what she's doing, but she doesn't look up at him. And she says, Sir, if thou hast borne him from here, hence tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. I'm going to go get him. You tell me where you took him. I'm going to go get him myself. That's what she's saying. She is so filled with emotion. I want you to see, I love this verse. This is my favorite verse in this chapter. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. One word, Mary. How many times do you think Mary Magdalene had heard her name called in her lifetime? Oh. Probably thousands, maybe one million times she'd heard her name before. But on that day, right there in front of the tomb, empty tomb, stone rolled away. She meets a man she thinks is the person who works in the garden there. And he asks her, why are you weeping and who are you seeking for? And when she tells him, I'm looking for my Lord, I, I, I want to find him. I, if you've taken him, bring him back. I, I'll bring him back. And he simply says one word, Mary. And everything changes. Mary Magdalene turns herself and says unto him, Rabboni, which is to be interpreted saying, Master. Now Mary Magdalene knows this man, this man is not the person who takes care of the garden. That is my Savior. I want to tell you, the people who say Jesus did not rise physically need to read their Bible. Because Mary Magdalene knew who he was when she looked at his face. She knew him. And she says, Rabboni, my master. Oh, her heart went from the depths of sorrow to the heights of, of being thrilled that her Savior was not dead. There was a reason he was not in that tomb. You don't put live people in a tomb. And Jesus was alive. Mary Magdalene was so excited. Uh, she wanted immediately, she wanted to fall down at his feet and hug his feet or hug Jesus. And Jesus said, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't touch me. Look what he says in verse 
uh, 17, Jesus said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to your brethren and say unto them that I'm going up to my father and your father and to my God and to your God. Jesus says to Mary Magdalene, don't touch me yet. I believe that Jesus is called the firstborn among many brethren or the first fruit because Jesus Christ here was the first human person to go into heaven. I believe that Jesus took his blood sacrifice and presented it to his father because without the shedding of the, the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I believe Jesus took his blood and took it to God and God accepted. And I think there's a reason Jesus says here, I'm, I'm going to my father and your father, my God and your God. You're coming with me in the future. You will meet me there, but don't touch me right now. But you will meet me in the future in heaven. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man or woman comes unto the Father but by Him. And tonight I want to challenge you with this thought. This is a, this is a true story. It happened exactly the way, the way that it's described here. Jesus showed up at the exact right time in history. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 says that Jesus showed up in the fullness of time. And he did what God wanted or needed a person to do to offer a, perf a pure and perfect and holy sacrifice for our sins. And Jesus Christ did that. He showed up exactly the right time. Well, do you remember the stories that I told you before, all of these, where God showed up at the right time? That's still happening today. And I want to tell you, there's one last thing I want to leave with you, and I'm going to be finished. I think we need to learn from Mary Magdalene. I think it's wonderful that she was the first person Jesus approached after he had risen. Why? She knew the depths of the challenges of being filled with sin. Seven demons had lived in her. She remembered that. Jesus had freed her forever from those demons. He does that for us. And I think what Jesus said to her, go back and tell the others. And the Bible tells us in verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. She told that story again and again and again and again. When do you think Mary Magdalene stopped telling that story? I don't think she stopped. She's probably still in heaven telling that story today. Why? Because it is the most amazing story in the history of man. We know that story. We have a responsibility, you and I, we have a responsibility, what? To go, just like Mary Magdalene, to go and tell the people that we meet that Jesus is alive. We have seen him. We have heard his voice on the pages of this Bible. We have heard his voice. We have seen his work. We have seen in our lives the conviction of sin and the forgiveness of sin. We know the power of the resurrected Christ. Now, what are we going to do with that? Jesus gave responsibility to Mary Magdalene. Go and tell the others. And he also gives that responsibility to you and I to go and tell others about our resurrected Savior. Praise God, tonight I can tell you for sure that Jesus Christ and God show up always on time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time tonight. I love John chapter 20, and I love this story of uh, Mary Magdalene. 
Wow. I, I can't wait to meet Mary Magdalene in heaven. It's going to be an exciting time to share the stories that we've heard and we've known. And, and Lord, I think Mary Magdalene will be excited to hear our stories. We can tell her too as we have gone to tell others and how we've seen their lives get changed. I thank you tonight that Scott, the, the young man I talked about in the beginning, is in heaven tonight. Why? Because Jesus Christ... Jesus Christ really did rise from the dead and paid off his sin debt. And I'm thankful he paid off mine too. Help us to be bold witnesses, to go and tell as many people as we can about Jesus Christ. We ask you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.